Me and two other guys share an apartment together and we split all the bills. The only thing we don't split costs on is groceries. Everyone's in charge of buying their own food and we don't touch whatever doesn't belong to us in the fridge. We put our names on everything so no one gets mixed up. This issue has been going on for almost a year and I'm sick of it. One of my roommates, R, keeps stealing my food. I get home from work and containers with my leftovers are sometimes missing, they have my name written on them, or my stuff finishes too quick. My gallon of milk for example. I buy almond milk because I like the taste. But it seems to finish after a week even though I've only drank once or twice. I confronted R about this lots of times, and that's caused a lot of arguments. He outright denies it and tells me I'm crazy, even though it's so obvious. My other roommate and I carpool together because we both work the same early morning shifts around the same area, so I know it's not him. It's always after we get back home and R's already left for work that I notice my food's gone. My roommates also had a similar problem, but not as often as I do. I'm guessing cause R doesn't like what he buys. The funny thing is R buys a lot for himself and is even more stingy about his food. He will literally point out what's his when he comes back from grocery shopping and tells us not to touch it. Last week, my milk was nearly empty again and I got fed up. I went to the liquor store and bought regular dairy milk. I drank what was left of my almond milk and refilled the gallon with the one I bought. This was to catch and prove that R is the one stealing since he's lactose intolerant. The next day, Saturday, we get back from work, R yelled at me that he was stuck in the bathroom for 40 minutes with diarrhea because of my milk. He was using it to make a shake. I only responded with so then you're the one who's been stealing. He freaking exploded. Yeah, he admitted he was sometimes drinking my milk and eating my food, but he was madder that I switched milk than the fact that he was caught. I told him I wouldn't have done that if he just stopped taking my stuff from the fridge or at least told the truth instead of trying to make it seem like I was making it up. My roommate backed me up and thought it was kinda funny he got payback for stealing from us. It's a little tense RN and my roommate told me R is trying to convince him to agree to kick me out. Little does he know we're both looking to move somewhere else together cause we are sick of this crap. I told some buddies what happened and a few think I was an idiot for that. I feel like I'm not in the wrong here. He was taking my food and not even owning up to it, and I wanted to prove it, does that make me an idiot? Not the idiot. Mostly. My only quibble, if you don't know the extent of his medical condition, doctoring with someone's food allergies, even if they are both being idiots, isn't a great thing to do. I don't think a serious lactose intolerance will kill someone, but I'm not a doctor. You would hate to have to explain this to emergency personnel. Yes, I know he had this food allergy, but he was being a jerk and I wanted to freak him over. This guy sounds like a jerk. I hope he actually learned something from this and from his roommates leaving him. Not the idiot. I think it's perfectly called for. And I would tell him that you will continue doing it. Sometimes do it, sometimes don't. And that if you do have almond milk, regular milk has been mixed in it, don't do it, pretty sure that might be nasty, although you can always test the theory and that you are putting milk, cheese, and butter in everything you cook. Hopefully, that keeps his mitts off your goods. After all, they are yours, and he had no business stealing. Not the idiot. It's funny because a similar story came up on this sub about a brother-sister dynamic, and the brother accidentally left something with peanuts in the fridge unmarked. The sister who has a mild allergy ate it, as was the said issue in the post, and she had a reaction. The users were saying if he had done it on purpose then he was the idiot which I disagreed with. However, I think you followed the correct course. You confronted the person. They lied. You are free to do what you want with your milk. You have every right to be intolerant of his actions. I got in trouble at school this fall, I'm a junior in high school. As punishment, my parents took away a lot of my things. All my clothes except three pairs of plain jeans and three plain black shirts and my coat. And all my makeup and hair stuff, purses and shoes, saying I had to earn things back with good behavior, I don't get to engage in my hobby, fashion, till I've earned it. Anyway, it was a crazy couple of months, but I came to a couple of realizations. It was actually kind of nice to not have to think about what to wear and how I look. My friends knew what my parents had done and didn't judge me. I also told anyone who asked why I looked like I only had one outfit what was up, and it was no big deal. 
I know it was supposed to be a demeaning humiliating punishment to make me look bad at school, but honestly, it just makes them look bad when people at school know I'm only allowed to wear one thing. I don't want to have things that are just something someone else can hold over my head. I don't want the old clothes and makeup back, if I'm gonna get back into that stuff I'll do it on my own terms. I'll buy my own stuff. So I told my parents that I don't care if they keep the clothes and makeup. They've made it clear that stuff doesn't belong to me. And it's gross to me to spend every day wearing clothes that aren't mine, that can be given and taken as a punishment. I'd feel gross and I'd rather not wear them again. So now my parents are mad because they've got a lot of clothes boxed up in the attic that the family spent money on, and that is going to waste. Nobody else can wear them, my mom isn't my size, and my only sibling is my little brother. I said I don't care, I want clothes that are my own, and those aren't it. Am I the idiot for not taking the clothes back and letting them go to waste? No idiots here. I doubt your parents took your clothes away to humiliate you at school. If fashion is your hobby then they saw it as something of value to you that would hopefully make you want to work to earn it back. I'm glad that not having those things taught you some things about yourself but learn this as well. If your parents love you then they have your best interests at heart. Tell them that not having your things made you realize you don't need them and that you would rather work and save to begin building your very own new collection. Going to against the grain and say everyone's the idiot here. It's kind of weird that you think your parents are in the wrong for punishing you. If you were being bullied or something and they continued with the punishment I'd change my mind, but that's not what happened. They're also the idiots because they shouldn't really be influencing who you have a relationship with, nor should they be getting salty that you learned a valuable lesson about your possessions or that you're gaining independence. Not the idiot and I love that this backfired. I get downvoted every time these types of stories come up and I say this, but I'm going to say it again. Taking away all your kids' clothes is not a good punishment, if you do it you are an idiot. Trying to demean and humiliate your kid and possibly even get them bullied is not a punishment. You are a crappy parent if you do that. I'm very glad it worked out for OP, and she is surrounded by good people. OP, your parents are idiots though. B14, my brother, Daniel, is 16. I used to live in City X, I was born and raised there. All my friends are here, all extracurricular opportunities I have are here the debate circuit is very strong here, connections I've cultivated for youth activism, good internship opportunities, etc. But my brother screwed up big time about a year ago and ruined it all for us. I'm not going to go into the exact nature of what he did, but it was bad. He didn't do something that would have serious legal consequences or anything. But it was stupid, incredibly problematic, and got him landed in a crappy situation for it to get spread throughout social media. He also got in trouble with the school, and he claimed he couldn't stay there because his reputation is ruined. Personally, I think he should have thought of that before he did it. My parents were mad, but they got sympathetic because he said he was getting bullied and they wanted to protect his future, so they moved him to two other high schools, but it ended in the same way because everyone knew what happened anyway. So my parents and he decided to move to an entirely different state, in City Y, without consulting me at all. My brother's future is important, but why should my future be sacrificed just because he screwed up? City Y is super small and has way crappier schools and doesn't have a debate league. I also had to leave all my friends behind. No one knows about what my brother did, so he's happy, my parents are happy he's happy. I'm the only one who's not happy. At the risk of sounding cocky, I had a really good future in my extracurriculars. Like definitely could have shaped up to be one of the best nationally according to a lot of people, if I had the right coaching and competition. I could have gotten scholarships to great schools for it. But no Daniel had to get himself into deep crap and drag me into it too. I've been here for four months now and I didn't talk to my brother at all for the first two months. Now we're all at home and my frustrations are building every time I see him. So at dinner, my brother was talking about his college prospects with my parents and I was just so frustrated that I snapped. Our conversation went like this. I think I have a good shot at getting into state school, what do you do with the crap you did last year? If you think running away to a different city and ruining my life can make what you did go away, then you're in for a treat. You're such a freaking idiot, get over it already. Don't hate him, stop blaming your brother, you need to start adjusting to city why, apologize for what you said. State school won't know. 
I'll email every single college you apply to with the screenshots and evidence if we don't move back to City X, that's a promise, not a threat. My parents got really furious with me for that, but I'm not joking. Am I the idiot or my brother and parents? I feel like your parents are idiots here. It's ridiculous how they made your brother a priority when he should have been dealing with the consequences of his crap. I'd understand if you had the same opportunities in City Y, but you don't, so I feel like they are spoiling your brother to the detriment of your future. I mean, he's also a kid, obviously, he wanted to run from what he did, but it was up to your parents to teach him that's not how things work. I do understand your frustration, I'm really sorry this is happening to you. Not the idiot, but on the bright side recognizing your parents as flawed beings willing to enable and hide their son's attitude is gonna be a great college app essay. Everyone coming in here with filial piety is full of crap. Luckily four years is a good long time to get adjusted to this new city, and with all this time on your hands, you can research the high schools there, get in touch with some friends and family to see if they would be willing to take you in for high school, reach out to other debate mentors. Not the idiot. Your parents aren't really helping your brother by protecting him from what he did and how he thinks. They're just avoiding the problem. This will likely come up again in his life. I don't blame you for being angry that the life you liked was destroyed and replaced with one that suits the other three in your family, but not you. You must feel very wronged and helpless. I hope you find a way to thrive. You don't have to forgive any of them, but it's in your own best interest to find a way to make it work in your favor. I, 21, used to date this guy, Connor, 25. Connor and I met through some mutual friends and dated for around 7 or 8 months. He broke up with me and immediately moved on with one of my best friends, Millie, 28. It was hard to watch, and it strained my relationship with Millie for a while. She'd constantly remind me they were dating, and at the time it was hurtful. However, during that time I met my current boyfriend Matt, 21. After Matt, the comments stopped meaning anything, and I was able to fully accept things. My feelings for Connor disappeared and eventually, I was able to fully move on and be happy. I mended my relationship with Millie as well. I now live with Matt after about a year together. I wasn't able to introduce him to everyone, but I got around to it a few months ago. The moment I introduced Matt, Millie began making the weirdest comments. Things like oh, you and I have very similar tastes and be nice to him, or I might just have to take this one from you too. It was super uncomfortable for both me and Matt, so I texted her after to let her know that the comments weren't appreciated or appropriate. She told our mutual friends about it, and it was split between her being wrong and them telling me I was overreacting. She eventually apologized, but the jokes continued, just more subtle. It was easy to brush them off. She called me a few days ago begging us to come over. Apparently, Connor had dumped her and she was having a mental breakdown in their apartment. We showed up, saw the place was a mess, and told her to shower while we straightened up and ordered dinner. She calls for help from the shower, I go to help her, and she's in her robe with it fully open, laying on the floor with her legs open. The second she sees me, she closes her robe and stands up as nothing happened. I didn't know what to think, but as the night went on it just got to be a lot. She wouldn't get dressed out of her robe and kept almost exposing herself. It got a little late and she suggested I go home. I asked if she was okay with this, she said yes, so I began to pack up with Matt. She asked if Matt could stay with her, and I told her if she felt that unsafe alone, she should come home with us. She restated that she just needed Matt and I snapped. I called her a desperate woman and left shortly after with Matt. She was crying when we left, but I didn't care anymore. She kept calling us, but we refused to go back. Yesterday we found out that she had a full meltdown after we left and didn't show up to work for 5 days. Her sister came to check on her and found the house an absolute mess. Millie told them we left her alone after she begged us to stay. I told our friends my side and most of them are saying I did the right thing. But her sister and some of our other friends are saying I'm an idiot for leaving her alone when she was clearly in crisis. Honestly, I'm beginning to think I should have just shut it up and held my tongue. Am I the idiot though? Absolutely not the idiot. You respected her when she got with your ex, but she is purposely disrespecting your current relationship as well as being inappropriate. No true friend would act like this. I would suggest having a sit-down discussion with another friend as a mediator, but I doubt her behaviors will change. Time to ask yourself if she is the kind of friend you want around.
but you are most certainly not the idiot for protecting your relationship from someone clearly intent on ruining it. Not the idiot. She's one of these girls who likes to try and take men from other girls to prove that she is so much better than them. Seen it a thousand times. Their self-worth is tied up in their ability to get any man they want. She is not a friend. What she did was indecently exposed herself to a man she barely knows and makes herself out to be an idiot. Wouldn't be surprised if the five days out of work and mental breakdown were deliberate, so she has an excuse for her behavior if she was ever confronted for it. This woman should not be in your life any longer. She should not feel comfortable calling you in a moment of crisis. If you want to be polite to her in a friend group, then do it, but block her in every other way. You need to tell your friends that you're done and that they can support her and see her try to sleep with their boyfriends. Tell them you don't hate her, but your friendship with her is over. Block the sister. Lock anyone else who is trying to force you to stay in this toxic relationship. Not the idiot. Long story short I've had, still have, a good career in something computer related. It is a well-paying field and squee I'm a hashtag woman in the stem. How progressive. My mom is a 70s feminist. My husband loves the pay scale. Most of my friends either don't work outside the home or hate their jobs, the latter group has good careers. Me, I have never been obsessed with technology, like I'm supposed to be. I just do this to pay my bills and raise my kids. I'm somewhere between smug that I got X done and look good to unfulfilled and feeling cooped up in a cube. The problem is that after a compendium of life changes, largely bad, I've had some revelations that I'm living my life for other people. While recovering from major surgery I started writing a children's book and I got interested by a literary agent. She's shopping it around to publishers as we speak. I've won a couple of awards for the manuscript from people in the industry who know what they're talking about. Writing is when I feel alive and happiest. It's not a job to me. I understand that you have to sell more than 10 books for you not to need a day job anymore, but pulling late nights to write or edit isn't a sacrifice. My family and friends are somewhere between furious at the time I'm wasting or stealing from my kids and employer and laughing at how I'm chasing a pipe dream. None have read a word I've written but insisted my books are crap. Oddly, the only outlier is my black sheep eccentric aunt who works in different publishing vertical. She's read my manuscript and thinks it's strong. Nobody else has read my stuff. But they're using buzzwords like delusional and please get professional help. To me, it looks like they're trying to gatekeep me out of feeling fulfilled and don't know what the hell they're talking about. Given that I am still pulling in a six-figure salary and benefits, taking care of my kids, and clearly my writing has teeth, I think they need to find something better to do. Who's the idiot here? No idiots here. No one has the right to dictate what you do with your life. Pursuing a dream is one thing, but you have a family to support, and the dream you're pursuing is difficult to succeed in. Authors of children's books don't make a living until they are well established and you aren't even published yet. I'm not saying you should never pursue it, but quitting the job that is providing for you and your family to chase a dream that hasn't yet started to materialize is not logical. I think your friends and family are just worried about you. Your writing career might not generate any income for years, and it may be unstable. You do not have to leave your job to pursue your career in literature and writing children's books. You can easily accomplish that during weekends and after work negotiating publishing with agents. Your book may be strong, but there are literally tons of aspiring authors, and I do not really know what is the point of giving up your job, well you can easily publish your book while you are working. Later you can leave your job in the IT industry, when your writing career generates enough money. Not the idiot. They should not have mocked you for following your dreams. I understand why your parents are concerned, but they shouldn't put you down for something you love and have a passion for. It's your dream, follow it. Realistically, I can't lie and say this is going to be easy or successful. It's not easy to make it just because we want it to happen. It requires a lot of work, talent, connections, and some luck. And you clearly are hardworking. But try to have a backup plan if you don't have enough savings.